wrote a song with Ludacris. So one day I'm at the crib, right? And I'm watching MTV. How you gonna name you my shit that I ain't even there? I did steal my shit, and I write certain songs for you, and then you get a Grammy for a song I wrote. Feel Mob, an American hip-hop group formed in 1999. One of the most difficult realities that's hard to accept as a good artist is not being properly compensated for your creation, whether monetarily or in praise that leads to accolades. Today's feature knows that all too well. As far as being good artists, Sean Jay and Smoke of Feel Mob were more than that. The Grammy-nominated group were on fire in the early 2000s with their creative, witty, fun, but real way of displaying their music, known for touching on real topics like slavery and equality. They had songs about love like every other male artist, but theirs gave a different and interesting perspective. Like how does the woman feel about you out all night and not paying attention to her after the relationship gets stale and comfortable? Or how does your lady feel having to hear people whisper around her all the negative things connected to your name? They were aware of how country people were looked at and made fun of for sounding a certain way, or eating this or that off animals considered unclean, or the way they dressed and danced. They took that and made themselves the mascot for it, proud of the feel they came from and showed it two talented individuals from a small town that made classic records in their era just couldn't survive the hurdles they had to get over and by 2006 they were gone as we knew them when they first began to create their buzz in 99-2000. It's not often you see a rap group from the south go to a New York based record label, put out a single and it becomes a top 20 billboard hit an album that goes gold and becomes their biggest album to date and be nominated for one of the biggest awards you can get as an entertainer. What is often is we see too many rappers or rap groups complain about being unfairly compensated for their work from a label that leads to you never hearing from those artists again. Blackballed. It's a travesty we didn't get more feel mob in the early 2000s and even today where their lyrical prowess and melodic sound could still be relevant had ludic- Ah! Don't finish your statement! Feel mob. The field. A play on words about where they're from in Albany, Georgia's appearance and also a place real injustice happened in the South. It all started when a mutual friend introduced the two who laughed about Sean Jay calling Smoke an ice cream sandwich because of his appearance. Later in high school, Smoke witnessed Sean fighting three guys by himself and was the only one that said anything about it. Because the two were both rappers, they'd see each other and sometimes battle in the courtyards, alternating the wins. Sean suggested they form a rap group to Smoke's hesitation because he was also a star in football in high school and had a real chance to see that through. Sean was convincing though and they did form a group. One that would become underground legends and legends period in the South. Stunt number one, just as they hit the gas. Just as they were about to, timing shook things up and as they say, things were never the same. Feel Mob quickly began to have musical success after forming due to them being ultra talented, different and their hustle was second to none. In 1999, they signed to Southern House Records. It was great timing for them because Southern Hip Hop was just starting to make noise. Groups like Outkast and Goody Mob. Every label at the time was trying to secure a Southern artist. Even better, a duo that looked anything Outkast. MCA, a New York-based record label, heard and saw just that, the next best thing. They were signed to the label, becoming the first Southern rap group signed to a major New York-based record company. They began working on their debut album 613, Ashy to Classy, that released in 2000, that some call their best work and was praised as one of the best albums that year. 
It was a modest release, but enough to have MCA want another project from them, which became From Ruta to the Tuta, released October 22, 2002. Their best-selling album to date, selling over 700,000 copies. It had the hit single Sick of Being Lonely, which was a top 20 Billboard song and solidified the group as a serious contender for best Southern rap duo. It was their second album, they were near platinum, and with just another strong push, could have fulfilled those promises and become the artist they had the talent to be. But right when they were about to, a year after in 2003, MCA's parent label Universal cleaned house and shuffled their artists around, passing Feel Mob off to Geffen Records. They already had a successful situation with MCA and were hurt by the phase-out of Universal by their next album being shelved and on the back burner for four years. Had Geffen know how to work artists like Feel Mob or pay more attention to their success, things would have been different if they could have used that four-year gap to their musical advantage. This led them to signing to Ludacris' DTP label, becoming even more unhappy, and as Sean Jay would say, even robbed. Stunt number two, beef with DTP. When Universal released their smaller acts to child labels like Geffen, Feel Mob had a hard time getting attention for a third studio album. Ludacris would step in as he saw the talent in its prime being wasted. He decided to sign the group to DTP and they began working immediately on a single and album. One single was called Georgia, featuring Jamie Foxx and Ludacris. It was their biggest single to date, peaking at 7 on Billboard and number 2 in Hip Hop and R&B and as mentioned was nominated for a Grammy. In a 2015 interview, Sean Jay recalls seeing Ludacris debut the song, which he felt was Feel Mobs on MTV while he was at home in Georgia. It was the first sign of disrespect the group felt from their new label, but decided to roll with it anyway. Then, the song ends up on a compilation project of DTP first before appearing on Feel Mobs' new album. But even a slight like that could be amended if one thing is in order. Of course, I'm talking about money. Like mentioned, once an artist is compensated fairly, everything's good. As time went by, Feel Mob began to feel slighted because they weren't receiving anything for their Grammy-nominated song at first, so started to ask questions. They released their third album finally in June 2006 and it became their first rap chart number one, peaking at seven on Billboard, giving them their most successful album solely based on charting. It had their first top 10 on there, So What, featuring Sierra. As far as monetarily, the album sold 500,000 less than their previous MCA release and again, they weren't seeing the payments from the album they thought they deserved. This led to a negative relationship between Feel Mob, mainly Sean Jay, and Ludacris. Luda dropped a diss song in 2011 where he bragged about spending Feel Mob's ringtone money still years later, while Sean and Smoke were having to resort back to the streets to survive. Sean Jay returned fire with his own diss that led to the group's blackballing. Stunt number three, blackballed. Did Ludacris blackball Feel Mob? I believe so. As you already know or have heard, the music business is a very shady place. Rappers are the ones usually taken advantage of because they're the ones that don't have the knowledge or someone to guide them through those very real negotiations. They're usually high school dropouts raised on street codes that frankly no one cares about within the inner walls of the music industry. Things like if we're friends and you say you want my services, we could shake hands and promise and I expect you to keep your word. That's never going to work in the industry. In that game, it's business that's respected. How well can your contract be refined to fit what you want? Most importantly, there has to be a contract in the first place. I'm sure Feel Mob at least had one with Luda, but I'm not sure it had their best interest in mind. After Sean Jay and Luda dissed each other on wax, according to Sean Jay, Ludacris began to tell anyone that would listen in the music industry not to work with Feel Mob. 
one of the pillars of southern rap at the time, he very much had that power. We would start to see less and less of Field Mob as they succumbed to the industry blackball tactics and resorted back to street life, both going back and forth to prison trying to feed their family. They wouldn't release another project together and even split in the process because of differences in direction and pursued solo careers. Sean Jay would later battle cancer and couldn't do things like shows and appearances because of it. Just like that, they disappeared. All in all, Feel Mob had the talent to become a way bigger group had they been handled correctly. Their skills and how they looked at rap as Southerners was refreshing and started many important conversations. They had a one-of-a-kind start to their rap journey, but business-wise, they struggled getting in the right situation. Had they come out today where you don't need to search for the right situation to blow, they'd be huge. But for these reasons, their growth was stunning. Salute to Feel Mob. Their music was really, really dope. If you have a chance, go check it out. It's your boy JC Stunned Growth, and I'm out.